What's up, my free jam friends? Today, we don't really have a Bible story, but what we are focusing on is an important command in the Bible that often we tend to forget. This command is found in Mark 12, 31, and it says this, the second is this, love yourself, your neighbor as yourself. So there's no greater commandment than these. Now, you should hear part of this verse and think, duh, Miss Katie, we know, love your neighbor. But the part we tend to overlook is when it says, as yourself. So, what did we learn from the past three weeks about loving others? One, sometimes our sin nature gets in the way of letting us love each other. Sin like jealousy or pride, which is having to be right, and selfishness. Two, we learned that we are called to love our brothers and sisters in Christ with an unconditional, sacrificial, selfless kind of love, the way David and Jonathan loved each other. Three, we learned that we are to love our neighbors, which is anyone we come into contact with. We might not know them, but we can still demonstrate love to them by helping them and just showing kindness. These are three points about loving others. But if we can apply them to loving others, and the Bible says we are called to love others as we love ourselves, then maybe these things apply to loving ourselves too. Let's look at each point and see how it applies to loving ourselves. Sin can keep us from loving ourselves. What kind of sin can keep us from loving ourselves? Well, how about jealousy? When we are jealous of other people, it's because we have compared ourselves to someone else and feel they are better in that area than us. Jealousy leads to us feeling unworthy and discontent with what God has given us. We're blinded to the gifts God has given us because we're looking at the gifts he's given someone else. It keeps us from seeing the beauty and the wonder in us, who we are as a creation of the most high king. When we are jealous, we not only aren't loving others well, but we aren't loving ourselves well. We have forgotten to love and cherish us and who God has made us to be. Remember, you are a treasured creation of God and he made you perfectly. So you never have a reason to be jealous of anyone, okay? Whenever you feel jealousy or shame or maybe unforgiveness towards yourself, remember that these are all sins. It's a sin towards God because you are dissing his creation, you. Sin keeps you from loving yourself, just like it can stop you from loving other people. Moving on to what we learned from week two, loving others as best friends like Jonathan and David. Jonathan treasured his friends so much that he risked his own life to save David. Jonathan loved David with an unconditional love. This is the kind of love that comes from God. And it's not based on how great you are, how good you are, and it doesn't go away when you mess up or if you've messed up a lot. This love is not based on circumstances, so it doesn't change. This kind of love is binding, it's a promise. David and Jonathan made a pact between their houses forever. Not, hey man, I'll look out for yours if they're cool, no. He said their houses would be bonded forever. This was a huge promise, but again, it was made out of an unconditional love that they had for each other. Unconditional love means that you understand the people in your life that you treasure most will fail at some point. They will fail you because we all mess up. We all fall short of the glory of God. So we don't love each other just when we're doing things right and we're on the same page. We love each other when we mess up too, when we disagree. To truly love each other people this way, we need to love ourselves this way first. And that means when you mess up, forgive yourself. Learn, speak truth, own up to your mistake and move on. Don't dwell on it. If you can't do this first yourself, how can you do this for others? You have to love yourself enough to forgive yourself and see yourself through God's eyes. Remember, you aren't perfect, and that's okay. And others aren't perfect too, and that's okay too. So third, love your neighbors. How does loving your neighbor apply to loving yourself? So neighbors aren't just our next door neighbors, right? They're anyone we come into contact with, and we are called to love them, to show love to them. Sometimes that means being inconvenienced. Like when your dad asks you to take out the trash for your mom because she's had a long day and you don't want to because you're playing Fortnite. Well, you've basically just told your parents that you can't make time to show your mom love. We don't love our neighbors because we feel like it or because they deserve it. Sometimes loving our neighbor 
might be buying a meal for someone you don't even know. Like maybe a homeless person that you saw. You don't buy it for them because you know them and they deserve that. You do it because you're called to love, no matter who they are or if you know them or not. You don't decide who is worthy of being shown love and who is not. You are called to love everyone. And Jesus loves us all and he loves you. So guess who you're called to love too? Yourself, because it's God's command, because you are his creation. You are his child and you are loved. Boys and girls, this is a lesson that hopefully most of you already know. I pray that through our classes, you have learned how loved and valued you are to God. Remember, this isn't a lesson that most of the world knows. Many boys and girls, they don't know that they are loved. Many of them haven't been shown unconditional love. Remember that God is trying to reach his sons and daughters and he wants to use you to do it. So be obedient. Learn to love yourself well so you can truly love others well. Remember, I love you. I miss you so much. And I am praying for you always. Mm -hmm.